Hello. Well, I've been having a really terrible time today. I've been struggling uh, with this uh, radio link um, the whole day. And it's a lovely sunny day and I should really like to go out um, and go for a walk. Um, there's good news and bad news. Um, uh, the good news is that I got this other connector and wired up the LoRa uh, transmitter to it correctly. The moment it's it's taped halfway up the mast, but it's supposed to be mounted up the top there on that little Delrin uh, um, gizmo that I made. So I did that successfully this morning using a hacksaw because I haven't got a milling machine. So we've got the transmitter here and it is transmitting the signal this stupendous distance of about three meters to the one that's uh, by the window there. And then that's coming back onto the screen here. So I can just demonstrate that working up to a point. Right now we've got a sequence number here which increments once for every pair of lines that's coming out. The C line is from the compass and the H line is from the Helmsman software and they come out those two lines once every second and every 10 seconds you get a G line which is the GPS. So that's how it should look and this is coming directly out of the micromite into a serial line into this PC. If we now interpose the LoRa radio link in this serial line. I'll show you how it looks then. What's happening now is that the Micromite is testing the LoRa radio transmitter to see whether it's clear to send and, and not printing unless it, it is. And we're actually getting one message through this radio link every 2.22 seconds. So we miss about seven reports due to the slowness of the link. Um, and I don't know why it is as, it's being as slow as this because the number of characters I'm printing there is uh, 106 I think. Yes, 106. And uh, the link can go at 134 characters per second. So it ought to be going a little bit faster than this. And I don't know why it isn't. It doesn't pay to look too closely inside this box because it is a patented bird's nest construction which uh, should uh, horrify everybody. Um, but if we just turn the power on so that is working and the telemetry is coming across the radio link albeit at too slow a speed for my liking. I thought what I would do is test if this IP68 box with its three connectors is uh, properly waterproof. So using the technique that I've used before uh, what I'm going to do is heat that box up leaving it open and leaving it still running um, with my electric fire and then I'm going to put the lid on and then I'm going to plunge it into this bucket of cold water and we'll see if it sucks any water in as a result of that. So I mean this is the kind of test that we need to do but it could have fatal consequences. I'm a bit worried about these metal uh, connectors um, because the o-ring there is only a millimetre in diameter so and it's right hard up against the rest of the thing so 
if there's the slightest error in the drilling of the hole, and drilling holes in plastic boxes is quite tricky anyway, I fear that this o-ring may leak. The other thing that's awkward is the nut on here. You can't solder these things in place, so you've got to solder them out of place. And then putting the nut on afterwards, it requires a special tool to engage in these two slots. Here is a special tool, unfortunately it doesn't fit anyway, but um, of course you can't put that tool on with uh, the wires in place. So there's, if this had been a hex nut, I could tighten it up with a spanner, but uh, I've had to tighten it up in a kind of uh, botched manner. So those are the two things that are worrying me about these metal connectors. The plastic connector that I've used is much better insofar as the O-ring is at least four millimeters in diameter bigger than the hole through which that you have to drill. So even if there's an error in the size of the hole, the plastic one will definitely be completely watertight. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to move this water out of the way first and then put the electric fire there and get that going because I don't want to heat the water up with the fire. Right, well it's been heating up for some time and the uh, temperature down here is 44, 41, slightly above 40 degrees. I'll write that down, 41 degrees. Um, so I think that's probably hot enough. So what I'm going to do is put the lid on and screw it up and screw it down as you wished. So the software is still working at this uh, temperature as one might expect because electronics is, uh, doesn't mind being heated up and uh, telemetry is still coming through slowly. So we'll turn the fire off, get that out of the way. back into the scenario. Right, now, this is the interesting thing. I need a bit more room in here. Here you go. Oh, I've got too much water in here. Oh, maybe I judge it about right, actually. Put that on top. Right. Well, there she is, underwater. And telemetry is still working. So if I rotate the compass, which is not that easy to do, but the rudder does move. Uh, so that proves that the software is still working in this underwater situation. I'll leave that for a while to cool down and then we'll examine it carefully to see whether there's any water inside. Well I went out to uh, leave this to cool a bit further and when I came back I see it's reporting I2C, I2C error. That's an error reading the compass. Um, so we'll, we'll take the thing out of its water now and have a look inside and see if there's any water in there. 
Well, all the lights are on as usual. The Micromite has three times rebooted itself as I move this around. Ah, well we don't need to I hope you can see there's a considerable quantity of water basically oh, you can probably see it there this much water has come in um, so that was a failure We don't need any more sophisticated test to show that. I think what I'll do is turn the power off now. What we don't know, of course, <coughs> what we don't know is how that water got in there. Four routes that water could get in. It could get in through this IP68 seal, or through this connection, that connection, or that connection. But certainly, somehow, the water's got in. I'm going to turn this off now. Well, I'm going to dry off these components uh, with the same fire that caused the problem in the first place, and I've taken this uh, power pack and warmed it up in the fire, on the fire, under the fire, in the hot air and put it in a Tupperware box with some silica gel and I hope for the best with that uh, because basically I can't see an, an easy way to open it up. Well, what have we learned today? Uh, firstly, the value of a checklist because when I took the uh, box out of the water um, I discovered that the two metal circular connectors had not been screwed properly home. I don't mean to the box, but the plugs had not been screwed into their sockets. This was because I just uh, pushed them together a few days ago before I started all this testing and I'd forgotten that I'd, I hadn't screwed them up tight and this, the connectors are specified to be IP68 if they're properly engaged. So that was a really stupid uh, mistake on my part and that may well be the reason how that the way that the water got into the box so I shall have to conduct a new test um, screwing them up properly. Second thing we've learned is that uh, these LoRa transmitters can't transmit at a fast enough rate to take the telemetry that I would really like to be sending. It will be adequate for seeing roughly what's going on but uh, it, it's depressing that they're so poor. So I've tested the HC12s, the RMO2 forwards from Laird and these LoRa's and none of them is really satisfactory. And what is quite amazing is that uh, my Phantom 4 drone can send back 720p full colour video over a distance of four miles complying with EU regulations on maximum emitted power and yet we don't seem to be able to get a simple serial transmitter uh, that will work at anything approaching a sensible speed or at anything approaching a sensible range. So I'm fed up with that. Anyway, the box with all its connectors does work and uh, Fingers crossed, it will be waterproof if I actually turn it, do the connectors up properly. So we'll try another test in a few days when I've recovered my temper and uh, see what happens then. Thanks for watching.